My dad bought me the Osmo Mobile 3 weeks before the Osmo Mobile 4 was released. But I will still be going to show you how the Osmo Mobile 3 works. Before we get going, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. By the way, you are looking at the combo package. When clamping your phone to the gimbal, the rear camera must be facing on the left hand side. If your phone is not balanced on both sides, you might need to invest something that keeps its balance. Can you see the screw hole here, right? Designed for counterweights. It maintains balance whilst filming with the gimbal. Let's now focus on what each of these buttons does. The battery level indicators, the shutter and record button, and the zoom slider. Simultaneously holding the gimbal to film, slide up to zoom in and to zoom out slide the slider down. Under the shutter and record button is the M button. This button can turn on and off the gimbal and other features whilst it is in use. For instance, you press the M button once to change from photo to video mode. If you do this, there is a greater chance ruining the gimbal. Pressing M two times can rotate your phone on landscape or portrait. Now for the button that stands out the most. The joystick. Hands free mode. All you need to do is go back from the gimbal and wave or do a peace sign. Then it takes a photo. If your gimbal is in standby mode, there is a trigger button to wake the gimbal up. Panorama mode is different on the Osmo Mobile 3. Instead you move your phone, the gimbal does it for you. Apart from the panoramic mode and does it for you, the app can do most of your short clips editing for you by following instructions. Click the top right where it has an S icon. Once clicked, you have different options to choose from on how your short video would like to look. 
Take note that the special effects and music are part of the option. So I chose this one. When you are going to start working with the app, the app tells you to film your subject at a given time. When doing this, you need to plan your beginning, middle and end. So I chose this as my subject at the start of the video. Then it shows me what my shot looks. I can either proceed or retake the video. That was my final shot and this what the result looks like. Once happy with your final result, you'll be able to save it in your local drive. Dynamic zoom is like a digital dolly zoom effect. The app and the gimbal work together and the user physically moves away from the subject and the app zooms in at the same time whilst the gimbal keeping it steady as possible. Instead of zooming out, I tried to zoom in. You can see the arrow on the screen, it tells you to move towards the subject. Then your final product is saved into your photos. Before you start filming right away, it is necessary to highlight your subject so the app knows where to zoom at as you go back. Next, let's try hyperlapse. It is a moving time lapse. I increased the speed of the clips on how I made them. What I did was walking in a direction whilst filming. If you come across to a point that your storage is full whilst filming, the app automatically stops the video and saves it into your gallery. There are different ways to hold the gimbal as you film other than holding it upright. The side grip mode. and the underslung mode. If you are filming and your battery is dying, you can also plug in your wire into the gimbal's USB port and it will act like a power bank whilst filming.
time lapse is like the one in the phone, but the gimbal and the app works together. I would recommend to film with a tripod rather than with your hands. You can also use the joystick as you do your time lapse. Active track helps a lot rather than using the joystick which takes longer to do so. Draw a square on the subject and the gimbal will focus on it and moves on what direction the subject is moving. It's your boy Cedric here, I'm 16 years old, please support my YouTube channel by clicking like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.